Hello and welcome to Candela. Earlier we have posted one introduction lecture about economic survey in our YouTube channel. Now let us begin our lecture from the chapter number 11 and this is going to be our first lecture in economic survey. Chapter number 11, external sector, watchful and hopeful. Nice. This is one very important strategy which we need to follow while studying economic survey or Indian economy. Never start from the first chapter, first chapter, chapter number two, chapter number three. In most of the books deals with uh, chapters like uh, nature and the characteristics of Indian economy, poverty and unemployment, planned economic development. So by the time you reach the interesting chapters like be it monetary policy, fiscal policy, inflation, public finance, etc., you will lose interest in Indian economy. So generally we advise you to pick some topic from the middle so that Tom, you will get an interest to read this fascinating subject. So chapter number 11 in economic survey, external sector, watchful and hopeful. You all know that uh, the external economic environment is not really conducive now. So during the post-pandemic years, uh, we have witnessed two of our neighbors, Sri Lanka and currently Pakistan, struggling with their balance of payment crisis. Even in our economic survey, the introduction itself starts from highlighting the difficulties which we are facing in our external sector. The difficulties like uh, elevated global commodity prices. Along with that, uh, there was a tightening of the financial condition and there is a financial market volatility and uh, countries developed or uh, developing countries like India, they are also facing issues like uh, reversal of capital flows because of uh, US federal tightening and with uh, the increase in rates. So there was an outflow, there is an outflow of uh, capital from uh, the developing or the emerging economies. Then uh, currency depreciation and overall, the global growth on the trade slowed off. So that's why we are watchful and we are hopeful because there are few sectors in our country which actually adds uh, or gives a lot of confidence that, yeah, we can deal with the situation. One is the service sector exports and the next is the foreign remittances. Okay. So in this chapter, I will make you comfortable with uh, these interesting topics like goods, Trade Barometer, the one index developed by WTO and the trade openness as measured by the trade as a proportion of a GDP. In general, what are all the topics which we discuss in this external sector? We discuss about exports and imports, international investment, foreign exchange reserves and foreign exchange reserve management as we have surplus of foreign exchange reserves. And um, there is no need to keep all these foreign exchange reserves idle. So there is an attempt to utilize these foreign exchange reserves in a judicial way. That is foreign exchange reserves management. Then the movement of currency against US dollars. We know that our currency is fast depreciating. And uh, this depreciation along with uh, the elevated or increase in uh, the international commodity prices along with the increase in uh, any interest rate, which makes borrowing costly. And this is one was the situation which we are facing now. But there are signs that uh, the external commodity prices are declining. And even crude oil, there are signs that even crude oil prices are also slowing down. And the Russia-Ukraine conflict now makes the situation furthermore complex. So in this topic, we will also discuss about the external debt and the balance of payment situation. 
So in the introduction chapter, there was some brief introduction about the shocks which we are facing, which includes the elevated though now easing global commodity prices. So post COVID, post pandemic period saw a sudden surge in international commodity prices. It made import very costlier at the same time depreciating rupee and increase in interest rate further added to the border. Then tightening international financial conditions. Everybody is panicking now because um, there is a recession-like situation which is uh, developing in uh, the Western countries. We don't know how long we are going to get insulated from this external shock. And we are taking steps to insulate ourselves from the external uh, shocks. One such thing is... Uh, uh, making arrangements to settle international trade through Indian rupees. I'll be discussing about that shortly. Then uh, reversal of capital flow. This is one major issue which we are facing because of very high inflation and uh, uh, the federal tightening. Foreign portfolio investment. People are taking back uh, the foreign portfolio investment from our country. So there are uh, signs of uh, capital flight and um, currency depreciation, then looming global growth and trade slowdown. In the introduction chapter um, in the economic survey, they mentioned that how much foreign exchange reserves which we are having. It is close to around uh, 562.72 billion dollars as of uh, December 2022. Okay, good. How much we have? more than 560 dollars, 560 billion dollars. And with this, for how many more months we can import? This is something very important. For the next 9.3 months, we don't have any issues. We do not have any issue. And even the external debt to GDP ratio, external debt to GDP ratio, it is around 19.2 percentage and this is largely manageable. Largely manageable. So, as I told you, international trade settlement in Indian rupees or close to around 35 countries who are having, who are doing a lot of trade with India have developed interest for this particular settlement, that is settlement of trade through Indian rupees. Even we are extending this to still the uh, Sri Lanka who are in the middle of a big trouble, a very big balance of payment crisis. So what is this uh, international trade settlement in Indian rupees? We import a commodity from uh, Sri Lanka. So until now we used to pay them in dollars. If we export some commodity to Sri Lanka, they also pay us in dollars. But the trade balance side will not be so significant here. But since we both for doing the trade and what is the purpose of using dollar here. So if you settle, if you make settlement in Indian rupees, so to some extent we can reduce the dependency of a dollar in international trade. So as many as 35 countries have expressed interest with India to do international trade settlement in Indian rupees. So that means they'll be paying us in rupees and they will also receive payment in rupees. And they will be stock filing Indian rupees. This is one way by which we can reduce our dependency on dollars. At the same time, this is one way by which we can reduce our external shocks. External shocks. So then, uh, global economic growth. From the beginning of the millennium, there were two big shocks. One was the major financial crisis of the year 2007 and 8. After that, with the easing of the financial situation, slowly there was an improvement in the global trade scenario. So it reached 4.5 percentage by the year 2010 and then came the pandemic where the trade volume or the international economic growth, it fell by minus 3.8 percentage. So after which when we were expecting a post pandemic boom, nothing as such is visible except a slowdown in the international trade. 
IMF have made a number of predictions for uh, a number of growth forecast. Uh, for the year 2021, it was around uh, 6 percentage and it is declining to nearly 50 percentage in the next year. 3.2 in 22 and 2.7 in 23. So that is uh, even IMF is making a forecast where there will be a decline in global economic growth. Global economic growth. Then uh, economic survey also discusses about the trade openness of countries. Trade openness. So this was measured by trade as a proportion of GDP. So by trade here, we add, we sum up the total volume of exports and imports. So we sum exports and imports which makes the trade and we are comparing that with the GDP. Trade as a proportion of GDP. For the world as such, it was around 50 to 60, it was somewhere between 50 to 60 percentage by 2003 and it is now around 52 percent by 2000 by 2020 it was around 52 percentage but for India we see a very big improvement here by 2005 trade as a proportion of GDP was just 40 percentage and by 2021 it has become 46 percentage and in the first half of 2020, it is about 50 percentage. So guys, remember, trade openness of countries. So this is measured by trade as a proportion of GDP by comparing the sum of exports and import with the GDP. So remember, this is a very important indicator. Trade openness of countries as measured by trade as a proportion of GDP. So uh, the global scenario, as I discussed earlier, right, uh, there is an uh, increase in likelihood of recession. So in major economies, right, there is a tapering of demand for consumer durables. And uh, we know about the aggressive monetary policy tightening by the central banks of a number of countries. And uh, the disorder, the financial condition. And uh, this all led to the destruction of uh, the supply chain supply chain. So we in our country we are taking number of steps for export promotion. For example the national uh, logistics policy now aims at uh, eliminating the number of bottlenecks in uh, the internal freight movement. And we have also signed um, free trade agreements with uh, UAE and Australia which all aims at uh, increasing our uh, trade volume. So next is goods trade barometer. So in the fast growing global economic scenario and with the development of uh, technology, okay, uh, in digital technology, in computing, we have uh, supercomputers now and um, data, the improvement in data science. Now, there is no need for us to wait for a long time to get the actual trade data, actual trade data. Now WTO, they have developed a real-time information or information to know the trends in world trade. This goods trade barometer is an index which shows the real-time information about the trends in world trade. So now there is no need to wait for, uh, uh, there's no need to wait for months together to get the actual voluminous statistics. So this goods trade barometer, as per this index, if the value is 100, it shows that 100 is the benchmark. 100 is the benchmark. Okay. So above which it indicates that um, a very good uh, scenario in global trade, and below 100 means there is something wrong. And now, as of 28th November 2022, the global trade barometer reading is of 96.2, well below 100 which shows there is a stress in international trade. So guys, once again, so please try to note down few important, three important things which I have uh, dealt today. One is the global trade barometer. Next is 
trade openness of countries as measured as trade as a proportion of GDP. Trade as a proportion of GDP. And one more thing, international settlement of a trade in Indian rupees. So, let us continue our discussion in external sector slowly. There is no need to be in a hurry. We still have what, three more months for our prelims. On page by page, leisurely let us discuss this economic survey. So, let us wind up this lecture one with this and let us continue our discussion in economic survey from the lecture number two. Thank you.